All right, we sincerely apologize for that slight hitch and welcome to Galaxy today. My name is Justin Akadome. Okay, he just did that again. And I'm Uche Onyekuji and welcome to February 12th um, edition of Galaxy today. And of course, like what do it? I like to say this is the day where we get serious. And today we're looking at national security and attendant issues. Right, Justin? Yes, we are a whole lot of um, uh, issues around uh, surrounding uh, security and uh, national security. So we'll be looking at all of that. Uh, the fallout of uh, national security uh, summit, which was held on uh, Thursday, Friday last week. And of course, uh, the Benu killings, uh, the IGP's uh, report, which was um, rejected at the National Assembly, uh, plus uh, the seemingly no love um, lost relationship uh, between uh, uh, Benu State Governor Samuel Otom and of course Inspector General of Police Ibrahim Idris. That's what we'll be looking at on the show this morning. And we have guests in Lagos, Abuja, and of course, any Badon. But we'll be starting with the Lagos yes, guest. And yeah. of course, we have one of the regular guests. You know him very well, and that's a person of Ambassador Roy Okidevi, security expert and CEO August I Securities. And with him is Ajibola Kaka, a legal practitioner. Good morning, sirs, and welcome to Galaxy Today. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. Very okay, much. each time I see this man, I just feel like, okay, I have a guard <laughs> behind me. I can't misbehave. I can't get protected. <laughs> okay, but we're looking at national security now. I'd like us to start with the legal um, perception today. So when we talk security, because it looks like the whole place is, um, everybody feels insecure now, wherever they go. Let's look at the legal aspect of it. What exactly is expected, or what form of a security are we expected to have as citizens? Well, thank you very much. It is the duty of the government mm. to ensure that the life and property of its citizens are safe, mm. right? And apart from this, in ensuring this, they have to make sure that they provide all the necessary security apparatus mm. in place backed with necessary laws that we ensure that no person is unsaved within the environment that he lives in and in and out of his environment. And this, we think that we are feeling the absence of the function of the government in terms of providing the necessary security to the people. So I can sue the government for insecurity? Very well, if and if, only if your right has been trampled upon based on that, and you feel that, yes, you, uh, you, you feel aggrieved more than any other ordinary citizen mm. on the street, yeah. you have the right to take the government on, on that. All right, let me come to you now, Ambassador Ohigeve. Uh, when uh, we are all um, greeted by um, the Benue killings and all of that, and just um, yesterday we heard um, in the dailies, um, in the news, uh, that four people were allegedly killed in the fresh killings in um, southern Kaduna. And we've been having various um, summit and various forums on security, but um, these killings have continued unabated. Uh, where are we going from here? Okay. Um, good morning, Nigeria. Mm. Um, it's sad. You know, we have been on this matter. We have been on this matter and we keep talking and talking. I think, um, let me start from the middle because the beginning is now common. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's start from the middle. If I was in government, if I was holding a government position mm -hmm. relative to these attendant issues, I would be thinking about my retirement. I would be thinking about my future, my activities I want to engage in. I will be thinking about my integrity. I'll be thinking about it. And I will be careful while I am in government right now, holding public office. Mm. If I am the IG, I'll resign. Mm. I'll resign. If, if, I, if I'm going to the judiciary, I think some people have been kicked out and then somebody has been forcefully retired. Okay? So if I'm also in the judiciary, where whatever the police has brought as prosecution, and uh, evidences, and I'm not accruing penalty, I should resign. You know, if I'm a governor and I have not seen security for the people that elected me to office, I will resign. If I am in the National Assembly and the Senate and I'm supposed to represent areas where this crisis have gone haywire mm -hmm. and uncurtailed, where this crisis has become an embarrassment 
to government, to the people, to the country in general, I will leave. Let's look at other West African countries that we have similar issues. It was March down same day. Why can't we attack this the way we attacked Ebola? Why can't we give it an all-out governmental approach with all the established offices? We talked about the police the other time. Yes, we did. Ar ar arresting corporates that commit murder. We are not here to say Fulani, Igbo, Hausa, Yoruba right now. I'm tired of all those uh, gimmicks, all those slangs. Let's look at a citizen of the Federal Republic of Nigeria committing a crime. Mm. So what is the process? Even if you say you want to coin it to political and say he's agitating, did you agitate rightly? Did you, if you say, okay, he's, he's venting, he's, he's trying to um, retaliate, are you supposed to retaliate? So those are questions. So I think the people that hold such offices, they should not be, we should not be calling on government to say, sack this person, sack this person. They should resign. Why? They are coming back to meet us. And I promise you, the society is fine-tuning itself for responsible governance. Okay. And since the society is fine-tuning itself for responsible governance, mm -hmm. there is this fear of rejection mm -hmm. for whoever is in government right now and is abusing office. Okay, all right. Okay. All right, then I like the fact that um, you said, um, you did say that it is the government's duty from the eye of the law to see that um, citizens are secured. Looking at the Benwick killings and what has been going on, and of course we know that they said there's an operation that's been launched out now to fight them back. A whole lot of people feel that this is rather too late. Like the present government is not uh, making moves. In your own opinion, if you had to suggest to the government about this whole thing, what would be your suggestion from the eye of the law? Well, number one, I would have uh, expected the government to have taken drastic action before now. Mm. We've had a series of killings before they now decided to draft military, you know, to the to the place. Mm -hmm. And secondly, they should, I believe, and I think they should declare a state of emergency. Mm -hmm. They know those who are perpetrating mm -hmm. this evil. Right. And by a kind of giving a palliative measure, right, is not the proper thing to do. The military, they should go there in full force and ensure that the property and the life of the citizens living in that state are secured. Where they are unable to do this, at least the governor is the chief security officer of that state. Mm. He ought to have taken drastic measure even before the military are drafted into that uh, state. Mm. At least by ensuring that all those people, at least if there is any external aggression into your state, you should know the proper way to make sure that if it requires war, to wage war against them, you should wage war against them to ensure that you, the property of the citizens in the state are secured and safe. Mm. And this attitude, even what they are doing now, have not even seen any serious measure being taken. Mere military parading here and there or whatever, without getting to the root of the matter, then we are not serious about security in this country. All right, uh, it's still Galaxy today, and we're looking at um, the state of the nation, security, and of course the attendant um, issues. Uh, we'll be joining Abuja uh, in a moment, uh, but just before that, we'll let you know that uh, you can be a part of this conversation, that uh, you can send an SMS to the number that will be uh, displayed shortly uh, if you have a question, if you have comment, or you can interact with us via our social media platforms uh, using the hashtag uh, Galaxy Today. Let's take a bit of um, sound uh, bite on uh, how it went at the Security Summit. Uh, the Vice President uh, Professor Yemi Oshibajo plus the Senate President among others were in attendance. We'll be right back. Stay with us. All right, uh, we must say thank you to Chido on my coordinator, African Center for Media and Information, Leach Racy. He joined us um, from Abuja. Thanks for being a part of the show. Now, I really want to get some um, quick opinion from you, Roy. Uh, you are um, a retired military officer. We've, had, we've seen a series of um, army operations um, for, uh, to speed um, and security issues in Nigeria here. Yeah. Okay, Python dance and crocodile smell. Now, um, I am at Batuba, which means um, a cat race. In your opinion, do you really think this is the answer to all the 
questions uh, you know, bedeviling um, the security of um, being a state? Okay, um, I can see that your, your question was directed to the mm. esteemed professor and he used style to just <laughs> maneuver it out. You see, um, it's a very, very deep question, mm. okay, because why you are going to be talking about leadership right now. Let me tell you something, Justin. We are not in a military regime. We are not. Now, there are military constraints to a man in Nigerian army uniform with arms. Who does he engage? Who gives him the approval to engage the, the other party? Who identifies the other party as a culprit or an assailant or a target? You don't just, if your, one of your bullets gets missing in the army, it's a court match, it's a very big offense. It's not like other arms of government where they can shoot in the air and walk away. If you sign for 20 rounds of ammunition from the armory, you are coming back with 20. If you are not coming back with 20, you must account for one or two or 10 you have used up. Now, the second thing I want you to look at is the government of the day, is its responsibility to deploy its security agencies. Either you deploy the police, you deploy the army, you deploy the DSS, EFCC, depending on the crisis on ground. Even when we have immigration crisis from Libya and all of that, we deployed so many NGOs and all that to contain it, to receive the people. Now, when you see that there is a failing, there, there is a the delay, let me don't say it's a failing, let me say it's a delay. Okay, let's use the right word so we can understand what we are saying. Now, when there is a delay to give the instruction to wipe out any armed militia by a superior force, which is the Nigeria Armed Forces, the Navy, Army, and the Air Force, mm -hmm. packed together. When there is a delay to give the instruction for the armed forces to wipe out any militia in the country, you now see that the army understands by my views that these people will become hydra headed like we have Boko Haram right now. Who is dying? There are still military people that are dying. Everybody is talking from their safe zone, from their comfort zone. It's still the military people that are in the Sambisa, that are in the border areas with uh, Kotonou, Niger, and all of that fighting these people. Now, once you see the military trying to coin an operation that we want to do operation deep punch to, we want to do python dance to, we want to do this in Benue, we want to do that in Katsina, in Bayesa, it is only a, a, a skill deployment to help to contain before it gets escalated. Because if the dance or the operations are not approved, the army cannot conduct the operation. An approval comes from higher leadership. Now, the army knows that coup d'etat is very, very unfashionable in Africa right now. Mm -hmm. Any country in the world that does coup d'etat by its military, they will be advised to hand over quickly, same day, mm -hmm. to whichever government they want to do. We just saw it recently in uh, one of our African countries. Mm -hmm. Now, once you see these dances, these operations, being carried out by the army. It is a, a design to quickly, stylishly penetrate into the troubled zones mm. and see what they can do to mitigate the, the expansion, the confidence of the criminals, mm. to quickly curb their flow of arms, of materials, of intelligence, to quickly penetrate into areas of their oppression and leave the barracks. Because if the issue gets out of hand, Everybody will withdraw, and you will still call the army. So anywhere you see the army calling for an operation, this, operation, that, quickly understand that they have deciphered information that something is brewing that will still fall on their laps. Okay. So it's a commendation that we're supposed to be given. It's an, uh, it's, it's an um, appropriate action that they are taking that should be received by the states where they are coming into. Right. Okay, please. I'm still on the security agencies. Yeah. I mean, I, I like to ask if it is not the failure of our security agents. This is what I mean. Okay, last week we had a guest who spoke about how um, these headsmen killing came, and he made a point saying that um, um, it's not just them. The headsmen aren't just fighting 
for a place where their cattle can graze. You no, know, no, it's actually a, a means. There's, they use their cattle to, to, to transport ammunition and the rest. Now, I wanted to say, you did make the point that uh, our um, security agents, uh, the forces are the ones that stays and bothers and the rest. Do you not think there's a failure on the part of our security agents? And probably maybe uh, things need to be done to beef up our security agents. Very good question. You know, that question, you also asked it earlier, you know, and I was waiting to see how I can complement what our legal um, friend here has contributed. Because he was, he was actually giving the, the view that the situation is very disastrous right now. Mm -hmm. Even offline, we were talking about a disastrous situation he just witnessed, mm -hmm. okay, on his way back from work. Now, look at this now. You know, in the last Ozubulu um, discussions, we looked at this um, security architecture. Everybody is using this language now. You mm -hmm. saw this, um, this meeting they are doing now, this seminar. Okay, I want to ask a question. Is it after we start burying people that we start holding outreaches, seminars, and all of that? No. Mm -hmm. The answer is no. Why? Because I'm here now. I want to be a governor, I want to be a a, a senator, a legislator, whatever I want to be in government, don't I have an, an overview of the challenges I'm going to meet? Don't I, shouldn't I start to do my outreaches now? Is there any of them that have worked to a garrison commander, a, a, a military commander, a police um, IG and say, come, I'm, I'm going into government. What are your challenges? Is it now? that we want to start looking at uh, social fabric, security architecture. Let me tell you something. I, 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 told, I, I told who cared to listen the other time. I said, we have what we call assets. The assets are the citizens of this country. Assets. Now, in every asset that you have, you have rings of protection for your assets. You have channels of protection. You must cascade responsibility to your protective measures. Now, we have the locals. Let's, let's, let's agree that Nigeria has not sorted out all the issues of um, restructuring, uh, who is coming back. The PDP now, we are hearing there's young PDP, there's old PDP. APCs, they are decamping to PDP. Uh, I am, I am, I, uh, most respected OBJ has come up with a new team again. Everybody is running there. Let's just agree that the right music for this party it's not being played right now. So we don't know what to dance. So as we have that situation, can't we fall back to our local security architecture or whatever language? Yeah, Excuse language. me. No, no, let me tell you. We have the locals in your town, in Benue State. We have them. That's now, what I think. That, Do you not think that to? they failed? Because I know that when things happen, people are quick to judge the federal government. Yeah. But these security agents, have, they have... They, they have their job about? description. Yes. So, are we not saying that they failed in their place of work? Or could it actually be what people are thinking that these people are actually the same tool being used because they think that um, some of these security agents are the ones who are actually fighting and them um, as against us thinking that they're the cartoon men. I don't know if you understand my point. So, as but, as uh, as a security, uh, I'm talking about the security agents. Now, do you not think that they failed in their duties? Let me tell you as, something, madam. Every security agency in Nigeria mm -hmm. have all locals, all natives. Yes. Your do. brother, my brother, they are in the DSS, they are in the police, they are in the army. Mm -hmm. If my people are dying in my state, do I have people in these organizations? If the organization contains locals, natives from the place being affected, what are they doing? If the system fails, you are in the system. Has there been, have you seen any leakage of maybe a document that have restricted action? Have you seen? Because all of these things pass through desk. Mm -hmm. Now, have you seen any document where the, the agency wants to go all out for investigation, for attack, for arrest, for prosecution? And there is a counter instruction saying, don't go. And you leak it out. Maybe everybody has it, we see everything, even the CIA right now. Mm. There are secret agents that were secretly deployed. Mm. The leak, WikiLeaks came up, all their names came up, people started running their task. Why can't we? We are not responsible 
We are not. We are not responsible to our locality. Mm. People are no more responsible to their native tongue. People are no more ready to sacrifice themselves. They are in government. Government security agency or government political parties or government establishment, they are forgotten where they came from. If mm. not, your first loyalty is to your roots. Okay, uh, let me just put in here. By second, I want you to react to that. But then again, last time we had the Mabenwe indigent here, one of the demands was that uh, the federal government should declare the, uh, uh, the full and the herdsman terrorists the same way the uh, um, um, IPOP was actually um, you know, declared. In your opinion, is this the case? Are they terrorists? Well, when things are going out of hand, there's no other name mm. that we can target than to call them a terrorist. Legally, because are they terrorists? Le legally, because they are disturbing the activities, mm. the security of the citizens all over the country. Not only in the north, gradually they are moving towards the south and southwest. Mm. Now it is Benue. We don't know which state will be the next target. Mm. What is there is that the professor that spoke from Abuja, actually address the issue. Because we are not addressing this issue of security the way it ought to. We are only giving a kind of palliative measure or addressing that security should be this, it should be that, without looking at the causes and the effect. Right, where the citizens are not happy, where they are not provided with all necessary social amenities that they are supposed to be provided with, mm. then there is <coughs> where we, then the country is in trouble. And where the leadership too, right, we are not having a good leader, then the citizens can be suitably attuned mm. to them because we don't have leaders to follow. As a result, things will happen differently. Now, we, uh, my, my friend said that there was delay in deploying the military or curbing the uh, security uh, bridge in the uh, in the Benue state is I, I want to agree that it's a failure on their part and that failure emanated from the fact that we are not practicing true federal system of government mm. if you are practicing true federal system of government the state the chief security officer is in control of the security apparatus in the state both the army and the police force and any other security agencies, then I know they will act timelessly to curb any insurgency in that state. And because they are looking up to somebody, looking up to the federal government probably, maybe that if we should take this step, is, is, is it going to be a wrong step? Or what will be the action of Mr. President or whatever? Or who are the people behind this thing? If we have devolution of power, and we practice through federal system of government, mm. and we put all necessary things in place, then definitely we will not be talking of all this security, you know, breach that we are experiencing. Okay, As sir. a result, the Fulani Asmen is becoming, in fact, really becoming unbecoming. And we want to say that it's not merely looking for where to, you know, provide, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, grace or whatever for their cow or whatever. I believe this issue is beyond that. Okay, I want to look at it that is purely political All and right. nothing more. All right. Okay, we'll step it back to the studio. We have to go to Ibadan and um, before then, because we'll be reacting to what you said, we'll look at um, why some people think it's not a federal issue. But let's take this to Ibadan, where we'll be joined by Barrister Wale Akinremi, an analyst and union leader. Good morning, sir. We're looking at it. Um, the national security, I mean Nigerian national security, but I'd like you to say from this point of view, using Benway's um, headman killing as um, a case study. A lot of people think it shouldn't be a federal government issue since it's an indigenous thing that they should allow it um, to be dealt with in, within the locality. But in your own opinion, what do you think? To Barista Wanli Akiremi, a unionist who joined us from um, Ibadan. Just before we conclude in Lagos, let me take one or two comments and I get reactions from um, Barista Kaka and, of course, Ambassador Ohiyeve. Uh, just to thank the Ambassador for this program, um, the President uh, Kogi Women for Reform, uh, uh, we're, putting out, uh, we're putting out that all aspects um, has failed in this country, not just um, the insecurity alone. The government of the day should do a general turnaround of all aspects of the economy. First is fighting corruption 
uh, with uh, sincerity. Uh, this issue is not peculiar to Nigeria. Fulani herdsmen are really uh, terrorizing <coughs> us here in Ghana and even um, have the nerves to exchange fire with the military here. They are so powerful and I believe ECOWAS and AU should look into the matter. Their menace is a sub-regional threat. Uh, thank you, Solomon Nachina from Tamale in Ghana. And also I've said uh, uh, many thanks to Ambassador Roy. Uh, the governor is the chief security officer uh, only in theory, but not in practice, uh, does the governor really have a total commanding authority over all security personnel in his or her state? Uh, the security man management in Nigeria is over-politicized even by the security personnel themselves. And um, they have uh, far taken religious um, dimensions, Aaron Kuje from JOS. Uh, just before we go, gentlemen, very quickly, I want to get from both of you. Uh, this uh, this uh, uh, viewer wrote from um, Ghana, and he said it's now becoming a sub-regional issue. Uh, what I really want to find out right now is how do we... Um, uh, stem this issue of um, arms, some small arms proliferation in the polity because uh, this uh, full and herdsmen, they have all kinds of sophisticated weapons. How do we begin to check this? Well, um, you know, we have a um, very porous environment right now. Okay. Very porous in the sense that um, we have identified arms coming into the country in containers. Okay, and we have gone to build relationship with those countries. But we didn't hear the end of it. Mm. We didn't hear the end of it. Right from my military days till date, I hear every time of arms moving from point A to point B. Now, in people that uh, move from even Western countries into another Western countries, they also have porous environments where they can go into. Now, it has already entered your country. My question is, you find Mr. A with a pump action that is not registered. You take him to the police station. How do you get the source? That case cannot die until you get to the source and discover that he got it from maybe Mr. Justin, and Justin will tell you, oh, there's a guy that comes to the water with Kenu, we pay him, we get weapons from him. From what country? Then you transfer that case to the Interpol. The Interpol liars with the other countries policing and they try to trace the supplier in their own country it doesn't die there most of these cases die because of logistics mm -hmm. most cases that see the light of day are cases that there is somebody to fund logistics because all the monies that the government supposed to channel towards logistics is sitting under somebody mm -hmm. and it's being pressed you, you see money is popping up everywhere they say it's for investigation. Mm -hmm. And the police, and they are looking for paper to just write statements in the office. Mm -hmm. And you go and buy paper for yourself. So if you want to look at proliferation of arms, fine, you cannot. Why? Borders are porous. Fine. So it has gotten in. It was found with someone. Mm -hmm. So can we hold that person responsible and say, who gave you? didn't wake up and see it in your hands now. Mm -hmm. Who gave it to you? You take us to Mr. B, Mr. B takes us to Mr. C, yeah. then we'll now know where it got into the country mm. if it is not from the country. Okay. 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 Mr. Kaka, uh, last word on the same issue. So we can just wrap up. Well, what is there is that it's not just issue of logistics, but we human beings, right? Mm. If somebody got an ammunition, as he has suggested, and tracing the source becomes difficult, at times, it may be some of the leaders, right, that are somewhere that will frustrate in the investigation. Mm -hmm. And at the end, they will allow that person to go scot-free without the investigation being completed. So we have a lot of problem in this country. Until we change our attitudinal problem, we allow law to take its, you know, a proper Please, yes. and to yeah. take effect, then yeah. that is where we can have a free flow of, you know, uh, uh, that you know, free flow of security system, a proper uh, security system in place. Without yeah. that, we cannot. All right, thank, thank you, so you much, gentlemen. Uh, finally, uh, this one says uh, the issue of security in Nigeria is beyond here. My question is, are we really safe again in this country? Thanks. I'm um, steady. 
uh, from Lagos. We must uh, wrap it up um, here. I want to say uh, many thanks to all of you who um, have contributed on the show this morning. We do appreciate it. Yes, and uh, many thanks to Ambassador Roy Ohidive. Thank you so much, sir. Thank and of you course, very much. To Ajibala Kaka, a legal practitioner. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much sir. Mm. And I want to say big thanks to Barrister Wiley Akuremi, analyst and union leader from Ibadan, as well as Chido Onuma, coordinator, African Center for Media and Information Literacy in Abuja. Thank you so much. And of course, for you sitting out there, a big thanks. We'll do this same time again tomorrow. I'm Uche Onyekuruji. Bye for now. And I'm Justin Akadanye. Many thanks for being a part of the show. See you tomorrow.